playing Sonic and Knuckles while awkwardly standing up. Ugh. I mean, I wish I could be playing the game right now, but instead I'm looking at this sodding comic version done by Archie Comics. Good day all, I'm Robotnik Holmes, and if it wasn't obvious enough, I'm not much of a fan of this early foray into adaptations of Sonic games. They're usually pretty hokey and awkward, and I think part of that is because these games are all different beasts. Like, they have their own quirks and introduce new characters, and overall they're all pretty separate for one another. So when you insert them into an ongoing comic which has an already established lore and history, it tends not to mesh well. This was the issue writers Mike Gallagher and Ken Penders came across when they were told, hey, make a story based off Sonic and Knuckles. And after reading this issue, I don't think either of them even looked at the source material. I mean, it's got the first level of the game, and the mini-boss you fight in it, and I think that's supposed to be Lava Reef Zone, and that's about it in terms of references to the game. It's like they totally winged it, and ignored the other elements that made the video game look awesome. Either way, we'll never get to reviewing this thing if I just whinge about it all day, so let's just do this thing. Buckle up, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. In this video, we're looking at the second of the special issues, Sonic and Knuckles. One thing I like to do when reading this comic is to imagine which writer came up with what scenario. They were both working on the main story together, after all. At least, I think they were. Let's see, there's an important looking blurb at the beginning that talks about how magnificent the world is and its setting. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's definitely a Penders thing. But in the next page, we have the substitute freedom fighters enjoying themselves on the beach. Probably a Gallagher thing, even though it was the other writer who made them. Anyway, the first story is Panic in the Sky, where the ominous looking Angel Island, here called the Floating Island to make it sound more imposing, appears and scares everyone away from a nearby beach. I guess in this continuity, Angel Island is less well known than in the games. Over at Knothole, the Freedom Fighters have a discussion on just what it is and what's keeping it afloat. A Rotor Warus also uses his amazing talking in front of a diagram skills to deduce that the Floating Island is making its way right towards their current location. I don't see why they're so worried about the island that floats, but apparently they heard eyewitness claims that the sky was falling at the beach. Do you guys ever do your jobs right? What about that island was falling on you? Anyway, enter Sonic and Tails, the two heroes who have actually been to Angel Island before in a previous issue. Wait, pardon me, but why did the two never tell the others of their adventure? You think that would have been something you want to tell to the other members of your team? Whatever, I guess it's just an excuse to remind the readers of what happened between them and the Red Echidna dude. The Freedom Fighters still don't know whose side Knuckles is on though, and I suppose that's to add tension to their eventual confrontation. You know they're planning for that to occur. You can't have Sonic and Knuckles rearing up to fight on the cover if it doesn't happen in the comic itself. Either way, Sally Acorn is taking no chances, and she instructs the Hedgehog to fly to Angel Island and talk with the Red Bloke, not taking any chances of him not being a threat. And so, Antoine flies them there, in what is clearly not the tornado and looks more like a military plane. And things seem to be going well, with no major hiccups. Well, except for the fact that the floating continent is now armed with defence cannons. Yeah, that's not good. So Antoine returns to base, while Sonic and Tails make a soft landing. And after Sonic says that being helped to land safely by Tails would ruin his image, bitch, in the games that move was handy as frick. Ow. They wander through Mushroom Hill Zone unknowingly being watched by a mysterious... It's, it's Knuckles. Look at, look at those angry freaking eyes. That's definitely Knuckles. While the two look at all the giant mushrooms on the island, Sonic bumps into a thing, and then has a weird hallucination that the mushrooms surrounding him all want to eat him. Yeah, I definitely chalk that up to one of Gallagher's ideas. That's, that's pretty silly. Anyway, they work out how to use the thing with Sonic on his own, and they run into the sub-boss from the game. <laughs> look at this guy. It's so goofy. It's certainly a far cry from the threatening thing that Sonic slash Knuckles would have fought in the source material. Anyway, that robot is completely trashed, like, immediately afterwards. And, oh god, Sonic should have looked where he was running, because now he's falling into a pit, and Tails isn't quick enough to catch him and save the blue blur from trouble. 
Sonic barely manages to get a grip on the ledge, but oh boy, look who it is! Appearing in ominous silhouette. Yeah, yeah, what's up, Knuckles? So, the Echidna is ready to send the Hedgehog to his doom for trespassing on his island. Uh, his words, not mine. Thank God Tails is there to drop a rock on him and try to rescue his friends, otherwise I would have had to call Knuckles a convicted murderer. That doesn't work, however, and the blue and red guy are both dropped into the hole. And when they reach the other side, which is situated above lava, they continue their little scuffle. Uh, I think there are bigger matters at hand here, fellas, um, so would you both just stop fighting and... Yeah, there we go. Thank you, Tails. So, Knuckles is saved, thanks to the heroes, and they fill him in on the details that Angel Island has moved from its original location, which the Echidna guy is quite confused about. He's also pretty annoyed about the cannons and engines that are attached to his island, and so he and the others set off to see just what's up with that. And that's all thanks to the... Zoot Toot? <laughs> okay then, very convenient to the plot. They find their way into the crystalline centre of Angel Island, where they find that the Chaos Emerald holding up the island is having its energy siphoned by a strange machine. It also looks like a cow's udder. And it's revealed that Dr. Robotnik was behind the whole thing. Who knew? Yeah, it was all part of the bad guy's plan to weaponize the floating continent and basically make it his personal death ship. Eh, this is pretty neat. I like all these silly little details of where he is under the island's surface. Anyway, the Red Doofus Knuckles finally understands that he has been tricked once again, and is pretty bummed about it. I mean, rightfully so. I'd be annoyed too if my home had lasers put on it without me even noticing. And so, seemingly taking a cue from Sonic Adventure, despite it not being invented yet, Knuckles picks up the thing powering his island, and, get this, he shatters it into pieces, causing the island to start falling. On one hand, I'm impressed, as that actually gets Dr. Robotnik to hightail it out of there. Like the freaking pansy he is. But on the other hand, Angel Island is going to freaking plummet now, on Not Whole Village. Holy crap, that took a turn. Everyone's going to be freaking crushed. Nah, don't worry. As dramatic as that scene makes it out to be, Knuckles has the situation covered. You see, he hid a spare Chaos Emerald under his desk and just had it prepared. You know, just in case the other one broke. So he destroyed a Chaos Emerald just to replace it with another Chaos Emerald. Uh, funny that the canon hasn't been established in the comics yet, because that doesn't make any sense. And so, the day is saved, Knuckles realises that jumping to conclusions is wrong, and he and Sonic part ways as... not allies, but more just as people they... met. Uh, yeah, happy ending, sort of. The Freedom Fighters appear at the end to congratulate the heroes, having just missed meeting Knuckles, and Jesus, someone forgot to colour in Rota's freaking face here. He looks like Thanos. And the main story ends with Sonic and the gang wondering if Knuckles will ever join the Freedom Fighters, or just stay in his secluded island forever. They gaze out at the floating continent, as an awkward outline of Knuckles' artwork stares back at them. <laughs> so awkward. The other two stories of this special were written by Penders on his own, and they revolve around Knuckles on his home turf. Who would have guessed? The first one, Fire Drill, has Knuckles investigating a random explosion. Or, f from the way it was drawn, it looks more like it was a giant fart cloud. Yeah, Knuckles, I think you'll have to look with Wario on that one. I hear he's pretty familiar with those sorts of things. After that, Knuckles spots a bush, and his first instance is to smash it with his fists. Okay? I know Knuckles isn't meant to be the smartest character, but he's not this childishly clueless. So, he looks around and finds the barren wasteland that I refuse to believe is Sandopolis' zone, and he zooms right over to the temple ruins. When he enters the weird temple, he finds nothing but darkness greeting him. But some dude hidden out of view activates a trap. Oh dear, how will Knuckles the Echidna make his way out of this one? No, he just does. Rocks are no inconvenience to him. The further the Echidna goes into the ruins to try and look for this mysterious intruder, the more he sees the aesthetic change slightly. I say slightly because it's drawn so poorly I'm not exactly sure what I'm meant to be looking at. But who could this stranger be? Knuckles seems to think it's someone who knows just as much about the inner workings of Angel Island as he does, and he mentions that his dad must have forgot to tell him of a secret place. Jesus, it's Locke's first mention in the comic, and it's already about him keeping secrets from his son. Anyway, there's a badly drawn sandstorm approaching, and Knuckles knows exactly what to do. Close his eyes and make a dumb pose as he glides his way out. Oh, the story's over. Okay, a bit of a waste there overall. But looky here, we got a dark hand stalking Knuckles, the, the same one as earlier. I'd probably prefer Knuckles just being stalked by a disembodied arm with how dull this story was.
Story 3, Lord of the Floating Islands. Pretty dumb name there. What is this, Game of Thrones? Yeah, this one is kind of the same, structure-wise. Knuckles notices something is up on his home island, and then he meets some kangaroo dude. He automatically believes that he's looking for his mother, and swoops down to grab his prey. It's, Knuckles, you can't just assume that from him just hopping around. Oh, I guess that really was the case. Silly me. Knuckles decides to look out for this random kid. He even goes on to explain the weather and the way the sun and the wind affects the island. But I'm already falling asleep at this point, so moving on. Suddenly a thundering herd of dingoes! Okay then. That's so weird. They treat them like they're just wild animals, and yet they clearly have the anthro designs of any other Mobian. Anyway, to finish it off, Knuckles reunites the kangaroo kid with his mother. Then the echidna just pieces out. And the story ends with him saying just how good he is at his job. Huh, well, I knew this was going to be underwhelming before I even got into it, but even my optimism was lowered after reading this special. The connection to the Sonic and Knuckles game was slim, and there was hardly any reason to even say it was a tie-in in the first place. They got literally nothing right in the details. Even the premise of Knuckles fighting Sonic over a misunderstanding is dumb. You guys made up in the last issue after Sonic helped you clear Eggman off the island. Why are you angry over him coming back and accusing him of the same crap? Well, it sucked as an adaptation, but did it do okay as a standalone narrative? Nope. nope. Yeah, it was really just the heroes going to meet the red dude, having a fight that lasted all but two panels, and then dealing with the villain shortly afterwards. The Panic in the Sky story was pretty phoned in, to be honest. Dr. Robotnik didn't even appear physically this time, that's how much they were phoning it in. Every character, except Knuckles, was pretty blandly written. The Freedom Fighters existed only to establish that Angel Island was currently a threat, and Dr. Robotnik was just a generic face hologram thing. Uh, I'd say everyone but Knuckles was a blank slate, but that's only because Knuckles himself had the consistent personality trait of being an utter dumbass. This single issue special was basically all about him, and he was still written as the biggest idiot. Not only that, but the story started and ended with no change at all. Muckles is still the ambiguously heroic echidna he was even in the previous issues. The second story structure is weird. It essentially boiled down to Muckles going, Oh, what's this? And then finding a thing. And then being like, Oh, what's this? And then being like, Oh no! And no joke, it's just six entire pages of that same scenario. It's insane that this was even put in. Like, it's, what, its story doesn't go anywhere. It, well, except to hint that someone might be testing Knuckles, like a hidden teacher of some sort. The build-up to something is appreciated, but it's still a boring ass story that doesn't go anywhere at all. Because of how lackluster the narrative was in these stories, as well as its tame usage of the titular echidna, I'm afraid I'll have to give the story a two. For the first story, we had Mawini and Manic working together much like a lot of the single stories at this point. They did okay with the material they were given, and at the very least the characters looked on point. The other artists on the other hand, Ken Pender's art is pretty poor I must say. I did try and give him a chance, and I admit the way he draws Knuckles isn't completely awful, but the way he draws backgrounds is definitely lacklustre. They're all so flat, and dull, and not to mention uneven. At times, when it shows the edge of the Angel Island, apparently he couldn't even decide if it was water or open air. It would seem that his art is as inconsistent as his writing style. The fourth artist, who I actually failed to introduce, was a Mr. Harvey Mercicado... Mercic... Uh, hold on. Hexbot, come over here. But, yeah, what, come, you want? Look, what does that say? Can you figure it out? Because, like hell, I certainly can't. Hum. Harvey Mercado, Ocoja, Cado, Ocoja, Cado, Ocoja, Cado, Ocoja, Never mind, I'll Google it. So, um, Harvey Mercado Ocasio did the art for Lord of the Floating Island. His visual style is also mostly bland and dull, but at least his backgrounds are far better, with the added detail in the bushes and trees. Don't think I can say the same about the way he draws characters though. Good grief. The first story had mildly decent art, but the others had stuff I'd probably scribble on the walls of my asylum cell. For these reasons, I'm afraid the score for the art will have to be the same. Yeah, just, just put a 2 there. No, no, there. Yeah, there we go. Final score. Um, a 4 out of 10. Yeah, I, I saw that coming. It wasn't that great. Like, at all. And that was the first of the specials based off the games. It took zero creative liberties or anything really neat from Sonic and Knuckles, like Sky Sanctuary or the Hidden Palace area, 
but man, I can only hope in the next one they actually include more things from the source material. Anyway, actually, speaking of which, in the next video, I'm going to be analysing the Knuckles Chaotix special, which has the first appearance of that detective agency we all know and love. Will it be handled as carelessly as this issue? Well, we'll have to wait and see. So I thank you for watching this video until this point, and I'll see you soon.